So here we need to determine the constitutional isomer of the given compound. And the first thing you want to remember is that in order for two compounds to be isomers, they have to have the same molecular formula. But the difference between the same compound between comparing two same compounds and the constitutional isomers is that they have the same formula. However, in the constitutional isomers, the elements are connected differently. So, open the hint and follow the link. This is about the constitutional isomers. For example, these two are constitutional isomers because they have the same formula. It's a must. Unless the compounds don't have the same formula, it's irrelevant to talk about being, them being isomers. Now, because they have the same formula, but the atoms are connected differently, they are constitutional isomers. For example, alcohols and ethers are constitutional isomers unless they have maybe some double bonds, triple bonds, or ring, and etc. Now, one thing that will help you to speed up the process of determining whether they are constitutional isomers or not is knowing the degree of unsaturation or the hydrogen deficiency index, which there's a link here that you can follow and find. Essentially, what it does, it, it tells us whether the compound has a double bond or a ring or a triple bond or is just a saturated compound with only single bonds. Now, here this is a saturated compound because we can't add any hydrogens. So what you want to know is the general formula of the alkanes, CnH2n plus 2. Same for the alkenes, which is going to be CnH2n. And for alkynes, it's CnH2n minus 2. Every time we have two hydrogens less, two fewer hydrogens, it means that it corresponds to one degree of unsaturation. So for example, here, this double bond, it corresponds to one degree of unsaturation. A triple bond is a two degrees of unsaturation. If you have a ring, that is also a degree of unsaturation, even though there are, no, there are no double or triple bonds there. So this is going to be very helpful in quickly determining the constitutional isomers. Uh, however, in the quiz, we, we're not going to spend the time of learning the subjects. It's rather quickly going over them and giving, the, giving you the hints how to do it in a shorter way. So let's now check our structure. Our compound has no rings, no double bonds, which means it's a saturated compound. And therefore, we can exclude this. Even though it has four carbon atoms, it has a degree of unsaturation, so this cannot be a constitutional isomer. Now, the second thing you want to do when determining this, especially if you are just starting the concept, is always number the number of the carbon atoms. And this is true, actually, I said, if you are just starting, but even if you are maybe towards the end of the semester or you have maybe even you are about to finish the organic chemistry too, it's always good to number of the carbon atoms. For one reason is that the molecules can often be drawn differently. For example, we can see it here in the post about the constitutional isomers. The two markers are obviously it's the same marker however one is drawn different than the other so it's the same with the molecules just because they're drawn differently it doesn't mean that they're different compounds and the way to realize to recognize this it's either to practice and develop a good vis visualization of the molecules or either number them or better name them if you name them and you see that it's the same name then it's the same compound however i realize that at this point of the semester you may not be up to the point of covering naming of the compounds and therefore you can simply number the carbon atoms you can number the chain without following any rules for example i would number here going from this carbon two three and four and now if i want to compare to these two i would start with the carbon connected to the br i will go one two three and four and it has four carbon atoms no unsaturation, no degree of uh, no degree of, of hydrogen deficiency, and what's important is I'm seeing that carbon number one is connected to the Br. That's what you're paying attention to, 
And that's what you have here. Carbon number one is connected to the bromine atom. Therefore, this is the same compound. It's just simply drawn a little differently. The Br, instead of pointing to the right, is pointing down. And the reason for this is because there is a rotation about the single bonds. And if we simply rotate about this bond, bond between uh, carbon one and two, the Br will be pointing down. In addition, you may also know that the molecules are not flat as we are showing them. They're not 2D, they're 3D structures, and this is a tetrahedral geometry. But even if you don't know it, it's okay. Always number the carbon atoms, see and check what is connected to each carbon atom. So we know that this is the same compound, and therefore this is actually a wrong answer because it is asking us to determine the constitutional isomer. Now, go ahead and start numbering from here. One, two, three, and four. Why do I choose to number from the left side this time? Because I'm always going to start with the same carbon that is connected to the Br to keep some consistency. And again, what we're seeing here is that carbon number one is connected to the Br. We have the same number of the carbon atoms, the same degree of unsaturation, meaning no degree of unsaturation. Therefore, this again is the same compound, so we can cross this out too. On the other hand, if I start numbering this compound from either side, maybe we can again start from right to left as we did on top, we'll have one, two, three, four. What we are seeing is that carbon number two is now connected to Br instead of carbon number one. So this is a constitutional isomer. They have the same formula. If we take the time and count every number of carbon and the hydrogen, we'll see that it has the same number of carbon hydrogen atoms plus one Br atom. However, it's not the same compound because the Br is now connected to a different carbon atom. And therefore, this is the correct answer. This we said is not correct because it has a ring which introduces a degree of unsaturation. So let's go ahead and check C. Next, so copy this. This looks a bit more complex. But this is what you want to do again. The first thing is determine the degree of unsaturation. Let me see. So select all structures that are constitutional isomers. So here we don't have a one structure. We just simply need to recognize all of them that are constitutional isomers. For example, for this one, we have how many carbon atoms? We have number. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. So there are six carbons, and that's essentially all I want to know. Then I want to know the degree of unsaturation because it has a ring that's one degree of unsaturation. Okay, so let's put here ring is one degree of unsaturation. We have a pi bond and we have another pi bond. So that's one degree, that's one degree. So overall, the degree of unsaturation is three. It, it has a compound, it is a compound with three degrees of unsaturation. Then it has a Cl and the Br, of course, the others also have to have these atoms, which is going to be one of the requirements for them to be constitutional isomers. Now the same here, we have five carbons, one outside of the ring, so that's six, three degrees of unsaturation. Now it's a good candidate to be a constitutional isomer, However, one additional thing that we want to check is whether the bonds are connected, the double bonds are in the same position as here. If they are, then it is the same compound, it's simply drawn differently. To make sure we don't do that mistake, let's number carbon number one that is connected to the chlorine and continue. So what we have here is going towards the double bond, which is further from the Br. So let's go in that direction. So this is going to be two, three, four, and five. So what we have is a double bond between two and three and five and four. And that's what we have here, two and three, four and five. There is a methyl on position five. So these two are equal. So in chemistry, instead of writing equal, usually you would see three lines. That means that they are equivalent. It's the same thing which means these two are not constitutional isomers. 
Okay, we can't say that this is wrong so far because the question is not asking us to determine the constitutional isomers for compound A, it's simply asking us to identify all the constitutional isomers. Now here we have six carbon atoms, that's good. What about the degrees of unsaturation? We have a double bond, so that's one. We have a ring, that's two. So that's two degrees of unsaturation. And the implication of this is that it's going to have more hydrogen atoms than the other two have on the left side because it, is, it has only one pi bond and a ring while these two have two pi bonds. Now, therefore, this is not a constitutional isomers, isomer of these two. And we're going to check this molecule on the right side. We have one, two, three double bonds. That's a three degrees of unsaturation. We want to make sure that we have the same number of carbons, three, four, five, and six. Yes, we do. So it's a good candidate of saying that it's a constitutional isomer to this. These two are constitutional isomers, and it's the same. It's also the same to say that 4 and 2 are constitutional isomers. So what we have is that 3 is out. It's not a constitutional isomers or isomer of any of them. And therefore, constitutional isomers are 1 and 4, or maybe 2 and 4. So we're going to see what options we have. So we said it's 1 and 4, which is this, or 2 and 4, and we don't have an option like that. Therefore, we're going to choose this answer.